namin na ito. Uh, bago tayo magsimula, ilang house rules lang po or paalala. Uh, when you entered the meeting room, your microphones were muted by default. So please do not unmute during the discussion para marinig po natin ng malinaw ang ating mga tagapagsalita. Um, habang nag-discuss uh, ang ating speakers, maaari pong mag-post ng questions sa chat box. So questions may be posted in the chat box during the discussions. However, after that, we will open the floor to questions. And at that point, you may use the raise hand function. Tapos tatawagan po kayo ng host para i-unmute at maaari na po kayo magtanong. So questions posted um, during the discussion will be answered at the forum when the uh, forum opens at the end. Um, once the floor is open to questions uh, and your name is called, please state your name and your organization or media outlet. Um, and then you may ask your questions. So uh, muli, nandito po tayo ngayon sa ikalawang press briefing ng Cure COVID. Uh, napapanahon, kakatapos lang ng um, media uh, briefing din ni, ni uh, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Rocket tungkol sa lifting ng ECQ, supposedly gradual if gradual lifting ng enhanced community quarantine sa bansa. So naglatag nag, uh, na sila ng ilang guidelines at ngayon naman ay uh, meron tayong ilang mga uh, tugon at concerns no, na nire-raise dito sa Cure COVID. So muli ang, ang Cure COVID ay ang Citizens Urgent Response to End COVID-19. Ito po ay isang people's initiative ng iba't ibang komunidad at sektor bilang tugon sa pandemya ng COVID-19. At epekto nito sa kalusugan at kabuhayan ng mga nasabing komunidad, komunidad at sektor. Um, para ngayon sa ating discussion ngayon hapon, meron po tayong tatlong speakers. Uh, hayaan niyo po akong uh, ipakilala sila ngayon. Uh, ang una pong magsasalita mamaya ay si Joshua Danak on What Do the Numbers Say? Siya ay representative ng Scientists Unite Against COVID-19, an alliance of concerned scientists, organizations, and other citizens. He graduated summa cum laude of BS Molecular Biology and Biotechnology at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and is currently a research specialist at the National Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. After Josh, uh, Mr. Paul Quintos on the topic of, is the health system ready? to discuss the results of a nationwide survey of frontline health workers. Paul Quintos is a senior lecturer at the National College of Public Administration and Govern Co Governance at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and assistant professorial lecturer at the De La Salle University School of Economics. He obtained his MSc in Development Studies from the London School of Economics and Political Science and has held positions in the academe, government, and various non-governmental organizations. And then our last speaker will be Mr. Thaddeus Ifurung on the issues and concerns on workers' health and safety, especially now na babalik na tayo dahan-dahan sa workplace. Uh, Thaddeus Ifurung is the spokesperson of Defend Jobs Philippines, a non-stock and non-profit organization founded by various labor unions, workers' associations, urban poor groups, and other sectoral grassroots people's organizations in Metro Manila. And now to introduce the panel, uh, and to uh, discuss further the issues that we are um, focusing on today, uh, tatawagin ko ang isang uh, miyembro ng Cure COVID at um, spokesperson din para sa Cure COVID, si Dr. Julie Kagia. So itong um, Cure COVID nga, ang panawagan talaga ng Cure COVID ay isang uh, komprehensibo, efektibo, Ibo, makatao at uh, participatory na pagtugon sa usapin ng COVID-19 sa pagsugpo uh, ng uh, pandemyang ito na dito umabot na sa ating uh, bansa. Um, nung, mga, nung nakaraan din namin na press briefing, naglabas din tayo ng mga panawagan ng panahon na yun kasi nga kung titingnan natin yung problema natin sa COVID-19 ay hindi lamang binunga nung uh, kasalukuyang uh, mga uh, problema natin sa pagkalat ng uh, sakit na to, kundi dun sa mismong uh, sistemang pagkalusugan na meron tayo bago pa umabot yung uh, virus dito sa ating bansa. So yung kasama na rin dyan, yung problema natin sa pang-ekonomiya at yung kung saan karamihan ng mamamayang Pilipino ay nalalagak sa matinding kahirapan. Kaya napakahalaga sa atin yung sinatawag natin na uh, uh, pag-iimpose uh, ng mga health measures na 
alam naman natin ay mahalaga para nga makontrol yung pagkalat ng sakit na ito. Pero yun siguro, uh, yung salita at pa, pa, uh, panawagan natin ay nakaangkla din dun sa nakikita natin na may marami pa rin kakulangan sa ginagawa ng ating pamahalaan. So sa mga ilan siguro na mahahalagang uh, mapapag-usapan ngayong hapon na to, yung kahalagahan ng panawagan natin nung mass testing. So isa po yan. Pangalwa po, dun, maliban dun sa pagkilala dun sa sakit, nandyan din yung uh, pag nakita na na may sakit, yung pag-isolate sa kanya, pag-trace pa nung mga nahawaan niya, yung pag-isolate sa kanila at yung paggamot dun sa may mga uh, sakit na COVID-19. Tapos kasama pa din dyan yung um, pagsisiguro dun sa ating mga health workers. No? Ano ba ang tingin nila sa nangyayari ngayon? Ano yung uh, tama ba yung sapat ba yung kanilang kagamitan? Yung dami ng mga health workers na nagtatrabaho sa mga tina- tinalagang COVID hospitals. So yung mga suporta sa kanila, transportasyon at iba pa. Yung uh, pagsigura, pagsiguro din na libre yung treatment at testing para sa mga pasyente. Um, at syempre yung mahalaga din yung sinasabi nating ayuda yung through the social amelioration program na alam naman natin ay malaki din ang problema. Na. At syempre kasama din natin sa panel yung uh, isa sa dahil nga ni relax na no. Ang maganda rin naman sa narinig ko kanina, bagamat syempre yung nagsalita ang presidente hapon, wala naman masyado siyang napag-usapan. Pero yung press con kanina, yung isa lang na narinig ko na sabi ko nga, uy, at least inamin na nila na maliban sa hindi na nila dinote yung flattening the curve kasi marami nga kinwestiyon na rin natin yung flattening the curve. Pero sinabi talaga ni ng Department of Health na hindi pa rin at kumakalat pa rin. Dahil ito ay isang health problem, hindi dapat dinadaan sa dahas. Ang ano natin is yung pagpupursigi pa rin ng health measures. Kaya um, sa susunod na isang oras, yun nga, handa na ba tayo i-lift uh, yung um, extended community quarantine at mga dun sa mga lugar na ni-lift na anong mga dapat nating paghandaan. So pakinggan po natin. No? Nagpapasalamat kami sa aming mga panelists na naimbita. Kasama ko po bilang tagapagsilita. So Uh, former DSWD Secretary as uh, Professor Judy Tagualao na magsasalita rin po para sa summary mamaya. So yun po at magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Okay, uh, hello. Hi. So uh, my name is Joshua Danak. Uh, I'm from Scientists Unite Against COVID-19. And uh, we are a group of um, scientists, uh, organizations, uh, concerned citizens who are pushing for mass testing. So just to, uh, yeah, let's, go, let's wait um, for the um, virtual aids. But yeah, so um, as a Scientists Unite Against COVID-19, uh, our major uh, push really is that we want to see expanded uh, testing capacity. So uh, whether we call it um, mass testing, uh, increased testing, um, expanded testing, targeted testing, uh, the bottom line is that uh, we need to be doing uh, way more testing than is happening uh, right now. And um, so uh, when we say that we need mass testing, Uh, what we need is an increase in the RT-PCR testing capacity of the country. So uh, I think there's a technical problem. There. So again, uh, Um, whatever you want to call it, no? Kasi uh, nagkakaroon ng quibble minsan over the, the semantics or the terminology. So whether it's massive testing, mass testing, um, the bottom line really is that we need to increase the PCR testing capacity right now. So uh, can we get the next slide, please? 
Yeah. So why why do we need to build our testing capacity? No. Um. Unang una, malaki kasi yung demand for testing right now. Uh, we already know this because there are backlogs in our testing centers. No? And the reason that we know that there are backlogs is because it takes too long to get your test results. This test should be done in one to two days, but it can take means on one to two weeks. So that, uh, and that is an unacceptable delay. And the reason for that is you don't have enough capacity to be absorbing the large demand for testing. So, of course, we also need to make um, COVID testing accessible to everyone in the country. Because right now, ang may testing centers pa lang, uh, out of the out of the twenty plus testing centers, majority of them are concentrated in Metro Manila. So there is a disparity in the access to testing when it comes to the regions or the areas na malayo sa centro or mas nasa periphery. And uh, of course, uh, we need to test because we need to get better data. So uh, I think the UP group also released a statement earlier today that uh, their models, we can come up with so many models and we can come up, come up with so many predictions, so many data, pero it's only as good as the raw data or the baseline data that you use to make those models and to make those decisions. So unless we have more accurate data and better data, so with a bigger sample, then we cannot say for sure kung ano na ba yung state ng COVID-19 in the Philippines. So diba, the strategy uh, is to test, trace, treat, and isolate. But remember, in this strategy, syempre, mauuna yung testing. Kasi you cannot do your contact tracing, you cannot do your isolation if you don't have a reliable testing capacity to identify the COVID-19 patients. Next, please. Next slide, please. Ayan. So, for example, no, um, recently, uh, oh, the, the previous one, the map. The, the previous slide. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, recently, no, many decisions about uh, can we lift the ECG uh, and BICO. Those are also the areas where many testing centers. So, kung nag coincide yung marami kan detect na cases with the areas that have more access to testing, then we have to account for that in the data na uneven. So may yung geographical disparity when it comes to the access to testing and that will also reflect the quality of the data we have when it comes to COVID-19. Um, next slide. So um, uh, another question, Rin, is because uh, the claim now is that we are starting to flatten the curve, that we are starting to slow down the transmission of the virus. But uh, this it's also possible na kaya lang na observe natin na parang nagfa-flatten yung curve is because we simply hit the ceiling of our testing capacity. Lalo na kung hindi naman na significantly nagbabago yung testing capacity and if hindi naman na siya... Uh, uh, if uneven nga yung access, like we said earlier, so it's possible that instead of actually uh, saying that we flatten the curve, we're just hitting the ceiling. And we know this kasi, if you look at the day-to-day, -day, no, hindi pa rin kasi bumababa. Wala pang nakikitang downward trend in the cases of COVID-19. So uh, we can't say yet na nagsistop na yung transmission or that we have contained the virus. It said it's possible no, na we're simply reaching the limits of how much testing we can do. Okay, next, please. So uh, let's look at the current state of our testing capacity. Now. So the number one indicator that we have insufficient capacity right now is really the backlogs. And there are two uh, major kinds of backlogs in the testing that we are looking at here. So unang una is yung backlog sa tests mismo. And um, that data is not yet publicly available. But we know that there is a huge backlog in tests kasi um, nag-a-announce ang RITM, ang Long Center, ang ibang testing centers na they have to scale down their operations temporarily kasi nagkukulangan sila ng supplies, nag-iipon yung samples. And we also know there's a backlog because again, there's a delay in the results. So um, RT-PCR, you should be able to finish the test and get the result in 24 hours, maybe one to two days. Pero kung lumalagpas doon, ibig sabihin, may backlog sa testing process. And aside from that backlog sa testing mismo, there is also a backlog in the validation of the cases. So, for example, the table here shows you the data of um, um, positive cases or the total positive tested individuals 
versus the confirmed cases. And there's a discrepancy that has grown from 2,000. Ngayon na sa 4,000 na yung discrepancy. And DOH has said that this discrepancy is because of the delay in the case validation when it comes to DOH. So that's another level of backlog, which means that yung data that we are getting right now it doesn't tell us real time. It doesn't reflect to us accurately. Ano na ba yung state ng COVID in the country? Kasi we have to account for all those delays and all those backlogs. Next, please. So if we look at our current testing capacity, um, as of May 10, there are 26 accredited PCR labs, but 18 of the 26 are in the national capital region. And this is the total that we have been able to accredit since since um, the beginning of the pandemic, only 26 labs. So this tells you that there is a very slow accreditation. And this is in contrast to the commitments made by uh, the pronouncements made by DOH earlier that um, they aim to accredit uh, all of the labs that applied. Uh, initially, it was at the end of April. Tas ngayon, ang bagong target is 50 plus labs now before this month ends. But uh, seeing the current rate at which DOH is accrediting these labs, we have to question kung talaga bang aabot sila dun sa targets na yun. Kasi nga right now, ang na-accredit pa lang mostly ay private labs in Metro Manila. So, um, next one, please. And uh, another point is that testing capacity is not maximized. And we know this kasi um, if you look at the DOH trackers, no, a lot of the, there's a huge fluctuation in the day-to-day -day testing capacity and a lot of the labs they are performing below yung stated maximum capacity nila. So what are the reasons why um, testing capacity is not maximized? Well, there are three things that go into testing and all of them are being, um, are not, uh, we're encountering challenges, which is why they're not maximized. So for example, when it comes to supplies, uh, there, there is a shortage of the supplies and the consumables that you need to run the PCR tests. And when it comes to personnel, uh, there is a shortage of the personnel so that you can add more shifts to your testing lab. So all of these are contributing to the reasons why testing capacity is not maximized and therefore um, we're doing not as many tests per day as we could be doing. Uh, in terms of the labs, so aside from the fact that 26 nga lang yung labs for the whole country, hindi pa even yung sample allocation because uh, the private labs are not included in the overall national sample allocation by DOH. So even if there are 26 labs, not all of them are actually part of the national testing capacity. Next, please. So what should we do to address these challenges? What should the government be doing? First of all, um, in terms of um, accrediting labs so that there will be additional labs to process samples, of course, we need to simplify, support, and speed up lab accreditation. So kailangan bawasan yung mga red tape. And kasi, you know, um, uh, lab accreditation to do COVID testing, it's, a, it's not an easy process. It's technically challenging. So all the more that the government should be there to offer support and to capacitate instead of just demanding the compliance. Uh, another one is, like we mentioned, um, there has to be an expanded sample allocation. So ideally, all the accredited testing labs should be sharing in the national demand, not just the public or government-run labs, which are designated as subnational laboratories. And then uh, finally, you know, in terms of logistics, we have to coordinate the supplies, the lack of personnel. There has to be a central body coordinating all of these things para mat matugunan yung mga kakulangan na kailangan sa iba-ibang lab. So, you know, uh, kung may kulang na supplies, kailangan mabigyan agad. Kung kailangan ng personnel, uh, kailangan matagbigan agad. And of course, since all of this will cost a lot of money for the labs, there has to be a dedicated funding allocated by the government in order to capacitate and to maximize the, the capacity of our COVID testing labs. Next, please. So finally, um, to, sum, to sum all of this up, uh, we see that right now, uh, we are increasing the testing capacity slowly, but uh, there is still a lot of work to be done because uh, there are still huge geographical disparities and we still have not maximized the current testing. So we have to continue to call for increased lab capacity because that is the way by which we can achieve free and accessible mass testing now. So uh, that's it for my presentation. Um, thank you.
Okay. Um, so, yung sa bahagi ko, i uh, babahagi ko yung resulta ng isang survey, national survey, na ginawa ng uh, Alliance of Concerned concern Teachers kasama ng Alliance of Health Workers. Um, at yung, next slide please, yung context ko nung survey na ito, um, alam naman natin sa lahat, we're, every night we're treated to tributes to our frontline health workers, no? At alam natin kasi sila ang backbone talaga ng ating health system at sila yung nasa harap ng paglaban dun sa pandemic. Ang nakakabahala, one out of every five COVID-19 infected person to the Philippines is a healthcare worker. So that's around 19% ang rate, ang infection rate uh, among health workers. I mean, compared to the total number of cases. And this is by far the highest among 37 member states in the WHO's Western Pacific region, including China. Ang average for all those countries is around 2 to 3%. So ang layo, no? ang layo nung infection rate sa bahagi ng mga frontline health workers natin. So mahalagang tanong uh, na sagutin, bakit napakataas nung infection rate sa ating frontline health workers? So yun yung context ng survey. At para makatulong sa pagsagot nun, uh, nag-survey yung Alliance of Concerned Teachers, Alliance of Health Workers para um, makita yung working conditions, um, yung, yung mga risks na kinakaharap ng mga uh, manggagawang pangkalusugan sa Pilipinas. Next slide. Um, yung survey, next slide please. So yung, yung survey ay ginawa, uh, correction, April 24 to May 3. Um, ang participants or yung valid responses na bumalik ay around 457 participants nationwide. Online to, so uh, syempre because of the uh, quarantine, may limitations tayo in terms of methodologies for data gathering. Uh, so this was done online. Uh, one third were of respondents were from the Metro Manila, from NCR, uh, around uh, uh, three-fourths almost from public health facilities around two-thirds I from nurses, yung responses. Uh, uh, tapos around three-fourths I regular workers. The rest I uh, contractual, temporary workers, etc. And uh, over half were women. Um, so, so um, very, kumaga yung, yung response profile, makita natin, yung, medyo nagko-correspond naman kung sino yung talagang, kung sino at saan yung front lines talaga, yung kumbaga yung uh, major concentration din ng, ng laban sa COVID-19. So that's Metro Manila, public hospitals, nurses. International Nurses Day nga pala ngayon. No? So mahalaga yung uh, makuha din yung perspective na ito. Next slide. Um, ngayon, di wala akong oras na ibahagi lahat ng findings ng survey. So mag-highlight lang ako ng apat na major findings. No? Uh, yung una... Yung fact na, well, yung according to yung, yung feedback ng ating health workers, nung tinanong sila about the adequacy of uh, frontline health workers according to different occupations, so doctors, nurses, nurse assistants, medical technologists, etc. Uh, across all types, halos, um, karamihan, two-thirds of respondents believe there is severe lack of doctors, nurses, and, and nurse assistants. Yun yung medyo matampok. Pero even for the other occupations, uh, malaki, halos kalahati or over half ng respondents ang nagsasabi na inadequate. Around 10% lang actually yung nagsabi na adequate or near adequate yung number of personnel. No? And the, the, la the shortage is particularly acute for, for doctors, nurses, and nurse assistants. Next slide, please. Um, when it comes to uh, infection protection and control supplies and uh, personal protective equipment, ganun din, no? Yung, ang, ang feedback ng mga health workers natin, there is severe or moderate shortage of supplies. So more than half of respondents uh, said that there is a severe or moderate shortage of supplies. In particular, yung N95 masks, COVID-19 testing kits, at saka mechanical ventilators and isolation quarters. 
Um, medyo kaiba yan dun sa nire-report ng DOH, particularly dun sa usapin ng mechanical ventilators, no? Na sinasabing maraming uh, unused. So, mahalagang i-validate siguro, no? Both yung data ng DOH as well as ito because this is, of course, um, an opinion survey, perception ng health workers. But of course, they're in the front line, so they know what's happening. Uh, in fact, yung, yung UP pandemic response team recently came up with a paper calling attention to some of the disparities no, in, the, in the data between, let's say, the DOH and the LGUs about cases. So in terms of data, may marami talagang kailan din improve it. Uh, so maybe this is one of them. But nevertheless, yung across all PPEs and IPC, while health workers at the 